Hi everyone, welcome back into the studio. Today I'm going to paint the Bronc Rider, which I already have kind of started here. It's really simple. Uh, what I did is, uh, this is a, I believe it is uh, like 18 by 25, or 16 by 25, excuse me. And uh, uh, it's a one quarter inch wood panel. I gave it a coat of the canvas prep medium, which keeps the surface. Some of you are asking, you know, what is a canvas prep? Canvas prep is different from a Jepso in that it keeps the surface very matte. So what happens when I come along with my brush is it grabs the brush and I can get a lot more control to the brush than having it sliding around. That happens with gessos. Some of your gessos out there have a lot of vinyl in them and that can happen pretty easy. So I love the canvas prep medium. All the links for everything that I use are over in the video description. So just go down, click the video description, you'll see all the paints. Matter of fact, all the palette colors that I have here are all listed out in the video description just to save time, okay? So what I did was I gave a coat of the uh, uh, white canvas prep medium. Then I went through and I sketched my design and I, then I sketched it again with some burnt sienna and a small brush. And then I took some of the medium beige, which is this color right here, the, the media, a touch of medium white and a touch of the sapphire, which makes beautiful grays, which is what I plan on using on the horse uh, though on the bronc here those those basically those four colors a lot of those with some greens and some of the others as well and but i made a light color added a little water to it and just splashed that with a big brush over the surface here just to gray down the start so what I plan on doing, my plan for this is to make the Bronx really textured. We're going to paint with a lot more texture than you normally see me do. Bring him forward. We'll practice some of those halftone texturing techniques. Um, and then I'll paint, I'm going to paint some people and stuff back here and some stands, maybe some sky and stuff back up here. And I have a nice reference photo over there and another one I have three or four reference photos out and a couple more standing right over there that I'm going to do, that I'm going to use in uh, uh, basically developing this uh, this painting, okay? Let's get going. So he's going to be a white, uh, basically going to be a white bronc. I'm going to take the uh, maybe a number eight, like Fusion Flat. I loved uh, using these types of brushes here. I'm going to start him out, even though I'm going to go, you know, almost a pure white on the real light struck area of the bronc, which is going to be right here. Um, I am uh, going to go start it down a little lower, maybe a, a medium white with just a touch of white. And a medium white is white basically, um, and you can make it with the white, a little bit of black and yellow. It keeps it down around a value seven. So I'm going to take this up to around an eight. So when you put this on and it looks slightly lighter than that area, that's what it will dry down to. And we're going to come right into here. We're going to try to follow good calligraphy here. And I'm going to use a lot of paint, so I plan on doing a lot of tapping down and touching of the uh, of the uh, surface here. And I'm going to build paint. Matter of fact, pick up a lot of paint. Matter of fact, let's drop this down. Let me show you one reason how I'm going to drop this down. A little bit of blue and medium beige makes beautiful grays. And we can vary that gray. We get other kinds of beautiful grays that I use on white horses, white flowers by using green and burnt sienna. If I want it to go really cool, I grab a little bit of the violets, sometimes a bit of the blue into that. You make all these beautiful grays. All these are gonna work. And what's gonna make the horse so interesting is when we work all of these grays. So we're gonna to wanna to have quite a few of them. And we're just gonna go, I'm just gonna go right down this side over here by his mane. And what I did when I did the burnt sienna was really I wanted to give myself an idea of light and shadow. And that's basically what I'm going to come through right now is give myself a very casual idea of light and shadow here for the horse as I'm working them in. And we're going to do this a lot to build quite a bit of, but quite a bit of texture. There's going to be a big muscle right out here and we'll, we'll drop some of that in. I want to just grab some paint. So I want the horse to be very textured and my figures back there that, uh, or you know, you're gonna see right back over here, I'm gonna paint them a little softer, a little bit more um, uh, transparent of color, weaker in color and texture. So you'll get, 
you know, pretty much a 3D effect here into the painting of the Bronc Rider really coming forward. So really going to build that up. Now, so that gives me a good idea about a good starting color for some of my light areas. It's not as light as I'm going to make, but, you know, with a good a la prima, premier coup type technique that I show you guys here on the channel quite a bit, you usually start out with the shadows and work up. But I wanted to see just how that's going to work, and I think I want to have just one more dose of light right in here. I want these muscle to really come forward. This is going to be a powerful area right there. So there's a lot of paint on there. And you can see the interest that a lot of paint gives it. But with the Ola Prima Premier Coup, I always get distracted a little bit. So much stuff I want to tell you guys. Uh, you start out with some shadows. So let's go in there and let's work some of those uh, shadows. We'll stay slightly warm right now. And I have some open medium here, and then I'll also have a cap out of extender. Now with all the Prima, with all the Prima and stuff, we usually keep the shadows a little bit transparent. So I'm going to add a little extender to this. And I don't, I'm not using it for it to blend as much as I'm using for it to, uh, to stay transparent. And I want to put some of this warm slightly warm into the shadows and then that'll give me some areas to cool i can come in and cool later on let's just take a bit of the medium white and some blue slightly blue here make a nice transitional tone here see i'll let blue come out in my brush and so what i work for so you can see there's the warm it's going in a little cool this is the kind of interest i want to give it now right into here you could you know if you're working with an oil people will just work it back and forth and blend it i don't like to do that i'm a tone painter so i'll come in with what we call a half tone halfway in between so i know i just have to lighten up a value or so and just strike that a bit right there a couple strikes and I soften that expression of that, of you know, that coming around that way right there. And that's what I'm looking for. Now, I'm also going to be looking for some structure. So a little bit of the, the blue and stuff here. Let's pull in and look for some of those, that structure, those deeper, slightly deeper shadows. Now, I also like burnt sienna and a little bit of blue, even the darker blue will make a darker shadow. See that nice darker shadow there? That is, I'm coming down here. And see, this is what I like. When I, when I don't mix it up real well like this on the palette right here, I get a bit of the streaks and stuff coming out. And that's what I like uh, here. I'm gonna touch into a little burnt sienna so some of it comes out as well. And that's the modeling that I like the, the painting to have here. So we'll come back down in here with some of that deeper shadow. And so to make the horse, the horse really to look light has got to have a lot of shadows on it. A lot of shadows here. And so we'll tap in some more dark. Let's see, that's the front hoof here. And there's just going to be his knee. Let's do this back one here. We'll add a bit of brown to that darker shadow here just push that in and lighten just whisper off the edge we want these edges here to be a little lost a little transparent so I'll hit them with my um, with my towel there see but see you can see some blue and some burnt sienna that's where the interest really comes as the artist now let's lighten up just a bit we'll drop a stroke or two see now that I have all those colors modeled on my brush I'm getting some real nice interest here and shadows. We make it slight transparent. I'm getting some real nice interest there as colors coming off for that leg there. Bit of extender here. So don't don't overmix your colors too much onto your palette. You know, that's where the interest is gonna come from. So we'll change up just a bit. Let's go just a touch darker here for down below his knee, down towards his pastern, and push that in, and there we go. And uh, here, I'm, I'm not going to do too much work here because I kind of put an explosion here. I'm going to have an explosion of dirt and dust and putting some, some um, power, some interest into the painting right there. Let's go over 
here a little bit more into shadow. Light's coming here from the top uh, right, so we will uh, change some of that out in just a minute. Let's get a little burnt sienna, a little yellow, right over here into some of this color and change this tone up as we come up that side there. So we'll, you know, we'll get some of the white, we'll get some of this medium white here. And as we go to the light, then we can start adding some texture. So we'll go grab that, pull that down. I'll just pinch wipe my brush like this. Sometimes I'll just pinch wipe my brush and just come across the, the uh, colors there just to um, soften them out without doing a half tone. So you can do a half tone or you can soften them out without or just with the fusions, it's really nice. Just lift the brush, the pressure on the brush and drag through and you get just a little bit of softening. You don't want to blend them to, blending means that you're making it into another color. I don't want to do that. I don't want to lose the color exchanges that I have there. Now let's take a bit of that yellow burnt sienna because this will get a warm and this is the one thing that a lot of Western painters do even into those cool shadows they take a bit of that nice warm which is coming from our background and everything else and you put just a touch of that in look at the the interest that that adds in there see and so it's a good habit to kind of get into let's take just a bit of that light drop that right in there on that side and that works good and um, then we'll that burnt sienna and blue, maybe a touch of violet and green. Those are all, see, those are all real pretty colors. If it looks slightly green, get a little more violet into it. See, changes that out. That's all real good color here. We can do that front knee here. Now, you know, um, as I head down to his fetlock here, his pastern, and uh, you can let, let it, you know, just use small movements here so we get some interest in there. We'll bring forward what we want to bring forward in just a bit. But we'll just slide that around a bit there. And then let's take a little medium white in this. And we'll just build, model. This is what I call modeling in some of the structure here there and we're really going to build this up right here we have to so that's going to come up on top matter of fact let's pick up a little light don't clean your brush just pick up a little light a little bit of white and some of that color let's drop that on drop down to a little bit of a half tone here and just drop so this is how I'm going to put the musculature of the horse on I'll be looking at my reference photos and stuff and starting to get some of the musculature of the horse in. And uh, big, huge light coming right down here that heads down towards his neck. And we'll get that shadow. Let's get some of that shadow. It's gonna be right up here. I'm gonna go right through his reins. I do it once, I'll draw it again here. Get some of that shadow running through here. There, just to get, <clears throat> so we want to start building some of that power on him. You can put just a touch of that shadow, like right up here for roundness of that particular element, but that starts getting him in. Let's get a bit more warmth, burnt sienna and yellow. We'll drop just a touch of that through. And sometimes, I, you know, what I'll do is I'll leave, especially at this early into the painting, I'll just leave some nice marks of that through because that just gives you look at the interest that it adds you know like a a little yellow right in here would just add so much to that whole power and movement of the horse don't be don't be afraid to put it in there just go for it okay just go for it in uh, you know because it's paint we can take it out especially this we're going to be painting over this we're going to be making it more opaque Let's take, uh, let's go back to a little bit of extender, some of our shadows here, and we'll go down this side of the bronc. This is be the shadow side here, right in there. And a little bit more, and I, you know, painting up around the face, I really want to keep these colors 
kind of modeled like this, not super mixed, because as I as I apply them on here, see, I'll get a little different tones coming out, which is really what we want here. Let's get just a bit darker there, here. See all that beautiful tones that come out there, and that just works so well when you don't mix too much here. And I constantly work it. Now, see, I I love mixing, and I love these colors to come out here like this. One reason why I use acrylics is that if I was using an oil, each time I touch it, it's going to keep mixing and mixing and mixing, you know. And each time you touch it, see, and very soon you're going to have it one solid color. And so by using acrylic that I know dries fast, I move around, it dries, and it gets tacky and sticky and you know, it make, it forces me to mix again, and I get more interest and stuff with it. Now, there's some people that don't like to mix like that, but I love to mix because I love the variations. So here's a little burnt sienna, a little yellow, just to make sure I carry some of that in there. Look at that interest that that gives in that part of this horse right there. And uh, we'll drop some of that in. But I just love doing that. Let's get the first part of that nice heavy a little bit more paint now right in through here it if I'm not careful if I don't stop short white will opaque out so and I don't want to do that so here's where my shadow is here's where this is so I'm just going to take some of this right up here and create some of this dark and create a half tone half tone would be right between the shadow and the light and I'll touch that right down in there a couple of times maybe uh a little bit more towards the shadow here as I come over there. Now see all the interest that I get in there in a couple strokes without eliminating blending or any of that stuff. So that's how I like to do it. That's, that is the pure essence of all a Prima painting where you paint, you tonal paint it really. Let's drop some of this down. Now I can just lift the pressure. This is called basically scumbling lift the pressure and just drop a little bit of that light over there leaving some of the tonal interest and you don't want to do it too long because you'll blend it but just a bit let's get some more of my dark since that's running out and starting to dry a bit let's put some yellow in that as well some of that burnt sienna that's all pretty color there let's push some of that right down Maybe a bit lighter, a bit more sienna here. See, I could push that shadow side of that plane of his face there. And if it's a you know cast shadow, you can leave it very harsh. If it's a form shadow, form cast shadows are shadows that are created by the object onto another plane. Form shadows are shadows as if it's a round object and light is here as it reaches the apex of that object and starts to round over. That's where the shadow begins and that's called a form shadow. So there's all different kinds. If you haven't studied color theory and the different types of shadows, you need to do that because I break them apart in my mind here as I'm painting the types of shadows and that also helps me with the coloring and the types of coloring that I'm going to use you know in that um, particular uh, object there so yeah we'll grab some of this let's just get a bit more of this uh, let's put a bit of that right on what's going to be his ear there and let's start bringing some of the dark here that's going to come right off that big Ford chest and right down his leg and uh, we'll get nice darks down his leg which will really help it advance let's give him a nice knee here and then down down towards his fetlock there and we'll get that nice dark so see you can see even with my with my base in the end by you know choosing some of these let's a little more burnt sienna here by choosing some of these values as I'm basing it in he's getting a lot of interest to him just with some simple basing in here there we go some nice interest and I just love those touches of burnt sienna right up and through here that might and a bit of the blue now we haven't gone with the light blue 
that light blue is going to be magnificent. We have, I'll show you that in a second, a little bit of yellow and medium white just to see, just even though that's dry right there, I'll just run right over it a bit, just lightly with my brush and see it incorporates it down and you get all of those color interests and stuff in there. That's where it really gets neat. Now, let's go up to the, the sapphire blue, a little bit of beige and some white. These are the colors of the gray that are in our background, but will also work as I, so I use those, those uh, burnt siennas and those other thalo blues and stuff like that down in through here for those real deep shadows. As I come up to higher value shadows, like five and above, so we're here at a six, and so five and above, that I'm gonna be putting right up through here for form, I'll add some of that blue because I'm gonna use some of that blue in the painting of him as well here. And it's going to be, and what it's going to do is white carries a lot of colors of your composition. And that's going to help carry our sky that we're going to be putting up in there, down in through here. And uh, so I'll, I'll just pull some of this down. That'll give a nice rounding to that muscular area right in here. We'll see that come down. That'll work pretty nice. Maybe a, a bit more powerful on the lights. Um, right here in that big forward you know they have that flat big flat muscle in the last western i did i showed you guys we talked a lot about that big forward flat muscle on that horse that's right there on his shoulder so i want to i want to make sure i build that and we're going to build that with lots of paint there but i don't want to lose all that beautiful blue so you can come back several times and some of the rounding that that shadow. So see by the calligraphy, I'm, what I'm doing is pulling some of the structure, the muscle structure of the horse with my calligraphy of my brush. What stroke, what mark, what we call a color mark, what I leave. We'll go a little darker here. Get a nice transitional tone heading back down on that side. So you can see that builds it. Now see how much darker that whole light just kind of draw dried down there. And we're gonna want to get some more of that shadowy light in there. And uh, we're gonna, on his neck muscle, which I want to do with a lot of blue right in there. Then we'll go into some of our yellows, mid-tones right in here. Just push those together. I do want to leave some of that calligraphy. Let's go medium white to white. A little heavier, maybe pull the rounding shape of that neck muscle, of that neck is right here. Pull it down like that so we get a little bit of that calligraphy. See how that little bit of that calligraphy starts him rounding down. And then we'll build slightly lighter, more texture right up through here, rounding down slightly. And that'll help to, you know, good, a good painting has a good story to it. And um, so you wanna, you wanna impart that story. It makes that connection between the viewer, between you as the artist, the subject, and the viewer. It makes a good connection. So you just gotta get a good story there. So we'll build that up there and so this is what I'm going to do I'm actually going to be doing this several times so we'll build this this blue back here and I'll set those tones in several times even before I get to the detail here onto his mane and stuff I'll set some of those tones and get some of that now I'm going to use exactly the same techniques here as I go to base in the uh, guy up here let's use a slightly blue violet Maybe a bit of light into that here. And uh, we'll start here building. Now I wanna do kind of a bluish, a real, real light bluish sky here. And I wanna use a lot of paint. So I tend to thin out when I first paint in, cause that's what I do a lot in florals and stuff. But on this one, I wanna go heavier right from the get-go to really build a lot of paint so that uh, this guy will really advance. 
And you can see immediately how this one is starting to advance in front of everything that's there. So he's already starting to advance here. And let's get a bit more of that, maybe a touch of that light right up there. That's where the light is really gonna be hitting him here. We'll have to add the wrinkles and stuff like that to his, to his shirt. Let's get a good shadow in there. I should be starting with the shadows. I get so excited to paint. I gotta follow my, my good protocol here, which is to get down to those shadows. Let's get into those shadows, blue, violet, a bit of the, some of the darker tones in there because those shadows are so important because the darks make the lights look lighter here. We can drop a bit of that through that arm here. Right in there. And there we go. There. And uh, maybe a bit more violet here. Right over onto this side. I like those subtle little changes. So I like some of those violets to show up into those blues and stuff in here and into the shadows. They're changing here. We'll just get a, a, a an idea of light and shadow and because we'll change this up a bit here as we're basing him in. A little bit more blue and light. Slightly different blue. Maybe just the sapphire here. So it's a bit different blue. See I like to I like those variations and stuff. That just adds interest here. There we go. Just some ideas. Nothing perfect yet, just quick ideas. But get your light and shadow. Concentrate on your light and shadow. Where's the light? Where's the shadow going to be, you know, in this painting? Here, let's get some more, maybe even that violet, red violet here. A little bit of blue. Now sapphire is more of a is more of a medium blue, uh, just a, a hue of blue. This is more of a blue green. The phthalo is more of a blue green. So it'll give you a slightly different look here. And let's get some of that shadow. Develop that shadow down through here, just a touch more into that arm here. See, I like this right here. I leave some of that interest right there because that's going to give, when I go to paint the wrinkles and stuff into his shirt, that'll give uh, a lot more interest to the painting here. Here we go. So that's a good kind of light, dark subject there. And uh, we'll come in and work the uh, pants here. we will take some of the yellow burnt sienna here right up through in this area here. That's pretty good. Get the shadows in, Dave. So let's go with some blue and some of that blues and burnt siennas here. Let's get some of that knee shadow right in there. This So shadow's coming on this, this uh, the upper right, so down as you go lower left, you're gonna get really shadowed down through here. A little darker going down there. Leave this, uh, like maybe take just a stroke. This is where the interest comes from. A burnt sienna, just go boom. And then maybe a little more dark, just a stroke or two. Just leave that. See, that's, you know, look at the, the interest that that creates. You don't blend them out. You do what's called optical blending. And for those of you that are beginners, optical blending is, I always tell everybody it's where you like take up a scoop full of sand from the beach and you can see all the little colors of the grains, but you put it down and look across the beach and it just looks like they all blend together. They move together. That's optics. So up here real close, you go, wow, Dave, you don't know how to paint. But then you step back and it starts to soften out, starts to blend out. It looks a heck of a lot better. That's called optics. And so, if you you know hang your painting in your house and you feel it looks a little flat or lost some of this interest, you blended or worked out your colors too much. You need to leave a little bit of definite or a little bit of difference in them, so that you can create some different optics. Now, 
so that uh, by the time you step back, the painting still has interest because the tones are a little further apart from each other. So we'll push a bit of that light in. Let's take that just a bit more yellow here, right down in here. So we'll push some of that in. We'll leave, leave some of that, uh, those marks there. Let's put a little shadow mark for roundness right back here. Little shadow mark right in there. Maybe just a bit of that yellow is coming up, showing up over here. Just a bit of it. There we go. We might pick up, I drew just a bit of his foot coming up over there. Let's pull down just a bit of that yellow right there. So that looks pretty good. Let's get a bit of this. That's bell you hear is the UPS delivery. <laughs> they, they always ring the bell on the side of the building when they deliver. So we'll push that into there and then maybe a little more burnt sienna yellow for the top of that here, the top of that saddle. Now see, I'll just leave some of that, you know, not real, um, not real blended, just, you know, what I what I say is this, I'm gonna put a little more light to have a separation of his, that saddle and his chaps here. And it is, uh, you know, you, you leave that kind of stuff and you leave some of it for the imagination of the viewer here. Okay, so let's see, let me just put in the real quick kind of the grays from those hooves here before I go up onto some more detail and stuff. Make a gray, burnt sienna, a little medium white and stuff. We'll put in some of this hoof. Now that can be a little darker. Some of these hooves here. We'll just model in some of this, and this is almost dry. It's very hot out today. It's uh, just right around 100 degrees and very, very dry. Uh, the humidity is really, really low, so everything dries real quick, but that doesn't hurt what I do here. I'm gonna put a little yellow, a little bit of those colors in there. I'm gonna do some separation of it, value separation, and you know, with the next layer and stuff find it a little bit more as I work on the structure of the horse here and so a little bit of those grays right in there see I love all that let that calligraphy help set that see by doing that and pushing like that see I almost create the you know the uh, uh, shape and stuff of that chest muscle and that leg the interaction of that chest muscle on that leg so we'll bring that chest muscle down right through here like that. See, that'll be good. That's just good calligraphy. That's The calligraphy is so important to uh, your horses and stuff here, to their shapes. Now, I'm just going to use a little blue and a little burnt sienna here in the corner of my number eight to just suggest, don't mix that up real quick, just suggest here the... Uh, the eye of this horse right there. Just tap it a couple of times. Don't try not to do a dot or anything. You know, they should have a little bit of interest there. Just there. try not to do a dot. And I'm telling you not to do that, and I just did that. So I gotta tap that just a few times. And that side's just a bit big, which I planned it that way. <laughs> No, it, you just take a bit of the horse color, any of that. We got to build that that uh, edge over his eye there anyway. So well, and look at that bit of blue right there. That works out really nice. Sometimes you you know your dirty brush, you just let what happens happen, and um, you know it all models out. Model, you know I use the word model when I don't want you to blend at all. You just push your colors into there and let some of that just come out. See, and that, that just works there. That just works. Okay. So we can see we can really build up in through here. Got a little bit more to build up. Now, I'm going to go, so that's my number eight. I'm just going to put a little extender in it to keep it from drying because it's real hot today. 
don't want to dry the colors. If it does, you just use that hand sanitizer that I show you in so many of the videos. It takes it right out really easy. Let's go with the medium white and stuff up here. We'll uh, start some of the hat, which won't show up too much. I got to get the blue into the sky, but we'll just push that in. Let's get that shadow, a little bit of the shadows from the horse side here, right up into that. Just get some color here because we're going to be building this quite a bit here. There we go. Just a bit of that up there. Maybe a bit of some of those blues. I just love to paint them many times, slightly different colors so I can get that interest in there. And let's just start him out very simply with a burnt sienna and white. Uh, keep the value up around a seven or so. So that's pretty good. If it's a little lighter, it'll dry down right to where you want. Let's just very simplistically here, just drop him in here. I'm not going to do any, just simplistic. Now, that's the other thing. I'm going to give him kind of yellow gloves, the yellow worker gloves. So I'll push some of that dirty yellow in there for right now. We'll make it a little little bit brighter here. We'll do more of that as we get into the detail. Right now what I'm looking at is building that paint and getting some of that paint on there. Um, oh, don't forget to touch into his ear there as well. And maybe just burnt sienna on a little bit of the blue so it takes that burnt sienna darker here. And we'll use that to kind of touch into where his, ha his hair and stuff will be here. Right in there like that. Okay, so that's just really simplistic. I don't want to do anything. I'm not even going to do any facial features or anything like that yet. Let's um, take our bigger brush here. And uh, that's the other thing. I don't know if the camera can hear that. A cricket got into my studio this morning. So he's been sitting over there in the morning, all morning long, just to singing. So it's kind of funny. So we're going to take just a real light blue, some sapphire and some white, up around a nine or so. Here I'm going to add some extender to this here. And uh, yeah, that's real good. We're just going to push that right through here. And I'm going to let some of the edges and stuff come out because I want this to be very much an a la prima painting and have some interest to it. And so it's not completely solid all the way to the edges. I want the, the viewer to come right into here, come right into the this area in here. So I don't know if it's maybe on that camera there, you can see more of it up there. You can see the glare. But it... Uh, well, I could drop this down just a bit. You can see I leave open edges and stuff like that there. And maybe a, a little bit more of a touch of blue. Maybe even a touch of the uh, blue-green. Or even we can add a little bit of violet into that. Slightly different blue, lighter blue, more blue. Not quite as great of a blue. Right around the rider here, just like that. So, I, you know, it's not super interesting, I mean, not super even here, and I just wiped out his hat, so I get to do that again. That was an opportunity to get in, do it again, but you're going to be able to see how that pulls it out. You know, so you see here with the writer, even leaving some of this over the edges of them here, I can break that back. Um, it's just a good thing. You can pull it off, just, you know, pull some of it off there. But that edges and stuff like that, you know, that's how you can make that misty look or softer look and stuff. It works really well. I'm going to pull some of that out. Let's add some beige to this, right into some of this here, medium beige. Get a big old dose of that. And let's work that right up in here, right up and around in here, right up around our horse. And we'll work it heavy, work it a little heavier, we'll leave some of that up there. Let's take some of that blue even. Think about harmony, take some of that blue, push that out and around here like this. Think about, you know, pulling that blue down and through your painting here. 
you know, that just adds a lot here. And so this is what, this used to scare me for years of just doing something like this and pulling it through. Now it doesn't. You know, I just, I love the casual nature of the painting here. And ever since I started doing some things like that, my painting started to sell better. You know, people wanted them a bit more, which works. So we'll just grab some of that here. Just push some of that in. We'll put the, the viewers, the, the audience in back behind that. You could even put in some you know, trees and stuff back there, maybe some light poles or something, you know, you can, uh, there's a lot of things that you can do. I'm going to leave it really simplistic because look how the horse is really starting to advance there now that I've got some of that. Uh, I'm going to go down, so that was my two inch brush. I'm going to go to my one inch brush, grab some burnt sienna, some of that blue here. Burnt sienna, I love this kind of stuff here where I just kick it up here, kick this up, kicked up that movement and stuff into the painting because that just adds the interest. And this takes, more than anything else guys, this takes a bunch of confidence, it really does. And that confidence came to me after some time. Some people say, oh, I just can't believe how you just take that brush. Boy, you know, even as much as 10 years ago when I switched over to more fine art techniques, it didn't come that easy. It's taken quite a few pains and confidence with my brush to let some of that stuff happen. And just to let this happen, you know, that I don't have to bring this all out perfect like that. And so as I move, so I want some of that interest there. As I move away from that, I just might want to soften some of that out right in there like that. As he's kicking up this dirt and stuff here, we might even want this a bit darker, so we'll grab a little bit of that darker blue, maybe even a little bit of green here, and just drop some of that right in there like that, right around that front. Leave some of those strokes, those marks, that's that power, that movement that's there. That's that's what's kicking it up here. You know, that's uh, giving that interest, and all of that will we'll pull this pull him through, pull it up front here, and uh, take some of that off the edges, but leave some of that right in that center. And, you know, this is all something that, if it doesn't work, you can wipe it down with water and do it again. But, you know, one of the things that, that happens a lot, and I was guilty of it too, is you tend to get into a little bit of a, a copy mode as you, as you try to copy. You know, uh, what you're seeing, like what I do in a painting or something like that, and then it becomes stiff. So it's best just to watch me do this and then say, okay, turn, I hate to say this, but turn off the video, sit down and just put it in there, and then don't go back. You know, don't go back. You got it done. You know, you don't go back. And uh, you got some of that movement. Now we can add some lights and stuff like that in there. But, uh, you know, it's not necessary right now. Okay. So I set that in. Now what I'm going to do is come back even one more time through here. I'm just going to come through one more time uh, before I go back into some of the back areas here. I might want to take just a bit of this movement, bring it a bit closer to that horse right in there. Blur off some of that edge. You, you just, I just don't want to look like it stops at the horse. So I'll bring some of that right into the horse there, right like that. There we go. So what I'm going to do now is just go right through that horse one more time. Just what I just did, build up more textures and stuff like that, building him up, bringing him forward. Then we can go work on the, uh, the people and stuff, the, the uh, little figures and stuff back here, okay? And start working some of his details. So I'm going to go build the horse the rider and his shirt and stuff again and I'll show a couple of clips like I've been doing lately. I'll show a couple of little clips along the way and we'll be right back.
Hi everyone, welcome back. Well, you saw me working on this, getting some more of those values on, softening some of those edges, and then I, I put some more color up and around him as well. They can carry some of those colors down into the horse, and I'll be doing more of that. You know that. Okay, so let's come in and let's just do a real, well, we're going to do a real simple face here. Um, burnt Sienna. I'm going to use my small, this is my uh, small number two Fusion Filbert. I love to paint the the figures, faces, and stuff with fusions like this. It just works so well. Let's take a, make a kind of a brownish color here. A little blue, a little burnt sienna, a little bit of brown here. And um, we'll add, you can also use the burnt sienna green that we did before. You know, that works. We'll just add, I, I like to change colors. And uh, so I'll add just a bit of that around. Uh, there and uh, let's get a uh, take a little bit more red burnt sienna and a little bit more red small little area here lighten this up so it's just a bit more pinkish and see that one of the references and stuff here so yeah and we're gonna end up I mean he's in shadow so I could go just a touch darker on his flesh here but the thing is you know when I'm working this I always remember, you know, and, and it's a good thing to remember, if you've got something and it's off just a little bit, don't eliminate it all. Paint, you know, use it. Work with it. Um, in other words, uh, you know, I'm just a bit light, so I'm going to darken it down and leave some of those areas that might be uh, like little shadows and stuff. So anyway, we'll bring out just an idea for his... his uh, nose and stuff there, chin line, um, maybe the burnt sienna with a bit of our blues and stuff, which will gray that down. Blues I usually use when I do portraits and stuff, I use greens, burnt sienna and greens. But since he's carrying so many blues, you know, putting some blue in there is good too. And see, that just helps a real grayish kind of shadow that works on him as well there and again we want to we can use something like that to um, start right up here uh, just almost like a little triangle shape here underneath the eye sockets themselves so I'm not gonna you know you don't paint when you're doing small figures and stuff which we're gonna do a lot on this painting we don't do um, you know fa a lot of facial structure we paint light and dark and that makes it a lot better because then the viewer can imagine and sometimes they see someone that they know or they uh, someone that they've seen before. Now I'm just going to go with a touch of the light here and use that just to soften and blur out some edges here. Make it very, you know, just model him up there just a bit like that. And um, we can go a little bit darker. And I'll do this a couple times. Um, you know, I mean, I'm a real big advocate of working it several times here. Working the light and dark there. Then uh, suggesting a little bit of blue in that burnt sienna. Suggesting slightly darker area right here for a socket of his eye maybe the underside of his nose and stuff there so he starts to come you start to see him a little bit more you don't want to do him too perfect here let's put a bit of that shadow right up along the collar line again here just like that can have a bit of that red, burnt sienna red there into that cheek area. I mean, in the reference photo, he's very much so. You very much see that cheek area. We're going to keep it real soft. Just a bit of light, a bit of those reds. You know, Sergeant always said, you know, the, you get that red, the ears are some of the reddest areas. Those of you that study portraits and stuff, let's open up that hairline just a bit here. 
I'll touch that through. That's a good, very soft, very um, suggestive. That's a, a good uh, start on that, and I'll probably bring him in again. But, uh, you know, and we'll work some more little details. We'll use this to work details. We'll put, you know, uh, the yellow gloves on him here. You know, we'll, uh, and again, I work, I'm an impressionist, so I work, you know, w with uh, marks, color marks. I don't try to blend them out and do a whole tremendous amount of detail. There's a real art, some of you have noticed, there's a real art to impressionism in that, you know, you, you do enough to say what it is, but not enough to... Uh, to stop the viewers, and as it was put, the viewer's imagination. And one of the things that I always remember when I do this, because I come from left lane realism. I studied realism for so many years, and it was hard for me to switch over from realism to impressionism. But uh, Monet always said, you know, you leave 25% you leave of the painting undone, uh, unfinished, or, you know, lost edges and stuff so that the viewer's imagination um, can take over. And one of the most fantastic things that I read in, in, in his writings and his thoughts was that uh, if you do more than 75% of the painting, you rob the viewer of their imagination. And so that sticks with me quite a bit as I'm painting and as I'm working and stuff. And so I always say don't get to myself, don't rob the viewer just give enough to, you know, we're just going to do enough here to say, okay, there's some yellow uh, gloves. And, you know, maybe a little yellow, a little bright haunts of yellow here. You know, the worker, the writer's gloves. And, uh, you know, they he's going to be kind of grabbing this thing here. So we'll curve that around a bit. And uh, just maybe a big thumb mark right up there. And then some others, and then let the viewer's imagination go from there, you see. And it works. It really does work. So I wish sometimes when I put that down, that was a good color. I can remember on the palette where I put that down. But uh, we can use that small brush. That works great for adding any other highlights or movements like that. See, little highlights and shines and stuff just add a lot here. As we work some of this, and you know, let's put like the edge of that saddle back on there. So I'll work some of these details. Then, then uh, one of the things that I want to do here as well is start some of these figures. Now I've wiped out <laughs> most of my figures here, so I'll need to uh, work those again. But we're going to work um, light and dark here, basically. And so I'm just going to use the small little uh, filbert here and I'm gonna try here to uh, do them very simplistic just ideas See, it doesn't take very much to say here's his hat there's a cowboy hat you know and uh, we'll do a little uh, flesh tone here it's very soft uh, burnt sienna maybe a little uh, bit of the medium white here keep that very soft we'll do the darker with a little bit of burnt sienna and some maybe some green here that's a good good shadow flesh tone here light and dark you know those uh, there was a um, I spent a lot of time with you on a painting that I did uh, on a little tiny figure, a fisherman, in there called Fishing the Riffle, and it's on the channel here. And I show you how to paint a, a super realistic little figure uh, quite quickly. And, uh, you know, and basically it's light and shadow. And, you know, you, uh, you're just going to set up, the, you know, as simplistic as possible. Here, now this guy, we're going to make him with his hands and stuff he's going to sit on this little railing so and i and so all i do is just use basically burnt siennas and lights and i blur the edges and i don't i try not to have too much uh realism to anything that's going to go on here as i paint these and it's just light and dark that 
basically what you do is you squint down your eyes. If you have a sample, you squint down your eyes and you look basically for light and dark within a little figure here and where the, where the highlights are, where the shadows are. And let's make this guy a kind of a gray shirt. So we'll uh, set up a little burnt sienna and a little light. And I'm going to keep this in his elbow. Arm's going to come down over the edge. Over the edge. See, I'm just keeping it super simple. And you use your brush. You know, when I envision a brush like this, I envision the brush doing basically sketching. So it's kind of like I'm sketching the, the figure here. Um, I'm going to need to get a little more shadow on that, that hat up here too. So we we'll just give that impression. So here, so you see everything stays and then what that allows us to have lots of interest and stuff up here on the up onto the um, to the horse here and it really advanced so you don't want to get too much going on back here you know with this matter of fact I might move to a slightly larger brush here so I can paint this figure a little quicker here and uh, just little touches of light ideas where light might be hitting here because he uh, he's not the, the interesting part of the the painting here he's we just got to do enough for you to say oh that's a person sitting back there sitting on the rail in there let's give him some blue jeans here and we'll gray those down just a bit Little violets, little greens, little burnt siennas. Very simplistic here. Here we go. Just see, it doesn't take very much. A few little streaks there, and he looks like he's just kind of standing there. And what you can do is take a little more, maybe slightly dark. Use your dark for if you want a, him to advance a bit. Use your dark for a little sketching here that just some ideas here and uh, we can bring this up a little higher but blur those lines see how I blur those edges those lines those color lines and everything and uh, he will uh, he will look a lot better when he's blurred when it's blurred up just a bit here so we'll get a bit of the shadow there go and I'll work this several times so I'm just gonna lightly paint the light what I call the light and dark of the figure and then we'll come back and uh, you know work some more on the horse and stuff like that but I'm gonna do this just slightly just paint them real simplistic back there and of course like everything and see you look at him there you can kind of see he sets way back here from the writer and that's what I want okay so we got to keep these really simple all right and uh, so I'll do that we'll come back and uh, I'll show you some things along the way but it's very simple light and dark light and shadow and uh, then we'll come back and paint some more on the horse and stuff okay so that we have time for some of that detail all right all right I'll see you in just a minute
Hi everyone, welcome back. Well, I uh, added just some impressions of that. They're really kind of fun, and I started to fill them up a little bit too much, and so I had to paint a few out. But uh, then you just streak some color back here just to give it some movement and stuff, and uh, it all works. And I put a little bit more light right in here against him to blur some of these back edges. Like I said, in a lot of the, a lot of our studies, a lot of the things that we paint, we need to concentrate on edges. I do it with you with the roses, and I do it with the westerns. And where I learned how to do it with roses and flowers and stuff was from uh, from uh, westerns, painting westerns. So that's where we are right now. Now what I'm going to do is add, and I've got uh, quite a bit of texture. This is dried and it's quite a bit of texture. But you can really see how much more he advances up in front of uh, what's going on. Now let's put some um, some details and stuff onto the horse, the reins, and the... And the um, bridal kind of thing here uh, that they were I'm not sure what it's actually called but let's just take some yellow and burnt sienna let's keep it kind of simplistic here we'll put some that yellow uh, and burnt sienna down maybe a little bit of green in it we'll hit it with just a little bit of yellow here and some of the noise you may hear outside they're in the back alley back here drilling down and putting all of the all of the overhead power lines and stuff that were through the city they're going through and burying them so we've got a little bit of noise so if it gets too bad it'll stop but uh we'll drop in just a bit of that uh, dark like that you know maybe blur it off a bit you know and i and it just you know blurring it off a bit and stuff just adds more interest we'll uh, take some of that by burnt sienna, a little bit of blue or green, and some yellow here. And uh, let's drop a bit of that right up here by us. Let's get it a little darker. Need it darker, get that phthalo blue in there. And I'm going to use the edge of my filbert here just as a drawing. I like to draw with, um, with, my, uh, uh, with my filbert. I like the chisel edge and to draw with that. So let's just draw that right on down there like that. And uh, let's just break that just a bit. See if I just if I just run the paper towel over it, some of the textures of the horse will actually take some of it off and give it some interest there. Let's uh, drop a extra little line so it goes through his head and then it might come on down here, right down there like that here. So, and I'm just going to let it be rough like that. So, you know, I got a little wonky right here. I'm just going to let that happen. And uh, because that's just going to add more movement interest to him. Let's get some of that line, maybe a bit more yellow and stuff here, over to the uh, other side here. And around, maybe a little bit of a shadow that doesn't show up too well. That's good. Let's get the bridal kind of thing on him here. I'm not sure of the actual rig, what it's called when they bronc ride. I'll have to look that up. And here, just a little bit of blue, extra blue, can uh, just add a touch more you know, interest. But see, all of those little reins, that kind of stuff, just adds to the, to the, um, you know, the details and the workings of the horse here. And so, we'll just grab some of that right there. And I, I try to do it kind of quickly here. And uh, just lines and movement and interest. You know, one of the things that, uh, I noticed that I did not do on him is his feet, the stirrup and his feet right down here. So, um, and it's got to go behind this front leg here. So we'll drop in the idea of his boots. And I had drawn uh, an extra little bit of it, which you know, I painted out, but the idea of his boot and stuff coming out right there as well. And then let's put a lighter kind of yellow. So 
here, almost a, we can even make it look more metal by having a bit of gray in it here for the stirrup coming down and around there. That'll be good. Let's add a bit of highlight, just a little bit of interest to it, a little more white. I like that. See where some dirty brush comes out, different colors come out. And that just, you know, painting with the dirty brush is really quite nice because it just, you know, it does a lot of the interest for you. You know, just boom, does it. Let's uh, drop on like the little edge, that blue and burnt sienna, phthalo blue burnt sienna, just various combinations of it. It's just real nice to do a lot of detail drawing, like the edge of his stirrups here. And uh, that just works really, really well. Let's put that a bit of that light edge over here onto the stirrups. And so, well, you wouldn't see it like that if it was coming in, because it would. You'd see it on the sides, and then his foot would be in the edge. Just, just a little bit there. Let's add some yellow to that to get it to brown up a bit. And we'll add a bit more of his boot. And you know, you just, you know, you just touch into colors and stuff here. And that'll give the, the look of it, you know, you just, and you know, if you wanna really make it look like a boot, you just kinda round it just a little bit around like that. Okay, and it stops. And then give a bit of the heel line. And that really makes it look more like a boot. There, when you get that little bit of the heel line in there and just like that here and let's put a bit of shadow on that. I don't want to get wrapped up in detail here just real quick here that works pretty nice but I need a I want to put a bit of shadow with that darker right around the stirrup here that just always helps give a bit more of the shape of it there, just like that, that's good. So you get the feeling of that. You could, you know, I could build up some more yellowy type of textures and stuff here. You know, just, just a bit of that, just, and that, yeah, that works pretty good. Just, see, just models, and look at all the colors that you get in here. That's where your interest comes from. You know, that's where all that wonderful interest starts coming from. Let's take some of that yellow and white, yellow oxide and white. I'm painting with a larger filbert right now. And bring that back out a bit. The edge of his chaps, just a bit more. And I put a just a touch of that blue down in there so it would be an indication of his blue gene and stuff. And um, we could have that just a bit more right in there. But uh, I like all of the lost edges on him as well. That works just real well. So that's really all that he needs there. Now we can work some more into our uh, ground and stuff. And I want to work some more into the hair. now. When I'm into his mane. So I'm going to do his mane. I'm going to flip over to my uh, number eight flat. I'd like to do the mane with the eight flat. We'll take some medium white, some beige, and a little bit of white and blue. I'll make kind of a grayish color here. And uh, now in, the, in some of my reference photos, they really wave up. So we're just going to go real casual here, just like that, just, yeah. And then, you know, I find it easier, I, and I used to, used to always put on the lights, uh, you know, and I mean the shadows and then the lights like that, but sometimes when I'm drawing like hair or like when I do a portrait and, and you put some of the very final highlights and stuff on last, but I like to shape, do the, I would like to put down, make a medium tone, kind of like what I did there, and then shape the hair with the shadow. I find it very easy to draw with the shadow. 
And so that's what I'm going to do here. And we'll take some burnt sienna, a little green, a little blue here, and uh, make kind of a, a shadow tone. And uh, we'll pull out here a bit. So see, I can really give it the hair look here of this by the shadow more than the light here. So I let just a few edges of that hair like that. Now, now is where you can kill it by going too much. We're going to pick up just a bit of the light and we're just going to hit it in a few areas here of this light because we don't want to take too much of it out. Pull that out. Let that shadow overtake that just a bit. Um, yeah, we'll just soften some of this. There we go. Maybe a bit more. And this be very, you know, less is more with this. So just smear it a bit here. It's always to, to me whenever you're working the, the main. You know, it's it's kind of a scary part. Now, if you get too much or if you do some, thin out some shadow too. And you can even put like a little yellow or something so it's a slightly different color and work that out through there and take out some of the light and then the main starts to calm down just a bit. Here we go. Just like that. So we can put in a few little streaks here. Just like that. It does. Let's drop a bit of here over the top of his head. A few little bits. A little bit of shadow here. Just like that. That looks pretty good. Maybe a bit more. See if I put a touch more contrast right up in here. That helps you get right up there towards that rider, which is what I want. Keep those edges soft. Blur those edges right in there. Keep those edges soft. Now, got the main. <laughs> you know, when I was a, when I was a beginner, even after you know five six years of painting, you know the manes on horses always bothered me. It's like, oh, now I'm going to screw them up because I'll get them too stiff. And the thing is, is don't paint very much. Just a few things, you know. And um, <clears throat> that's the secret to it. Just don't do very much here. And boom, put just a, get that light right there a bit more. Now, we can uh, put on a, a, a touch. I kind of like everything about the painting. Maybe uh, we'll get some of our Let's get some of our whites and our medium beiges here and our medium whites, some of this blue. Let's grab some of the yellows here. Get some more of that beige. Just kind of dirty model some of this stuff up here. And, uh, you know, what we're going to do is we're just going to we're just going to pound some of this on in here like this. Maybe pull some of it here to create some light and dark. And basically also to create more textures right around in here. Here like this. And I'll probably put some more darks in. but Because uh, I do like that kind of swirling up, kicking up. And you can, you know, I've showed you before how to create the dust. You know, the, the dust in some of these, and you can create some of that dust here. I'll put in some strong horizontals and a few verticals here, just to help you with that plane. That look, let's um, take, let's go to my one inch brush here. We'll take some of this, maybe jet some of that back here. Because that gives you good linear perspective. This is, you put it in the lines here like this for linear perspective. Okay, so you need some good horizontal lines for your linear 
perspective in your paintings, shoves things back. Here. I need to put a bit more light or dark. Let's see. Light or dark. Let's go slightly dark on that. Could go either way. Let's go just a bit darker. Just a bit here. So the back leg of that horse shows up more. Right in there like that. That works. So you can see some of this nice movement here. Let's grab some of this. Kick some of this up. Nice rough rodeo arena here. Just like that. There we go. And see that all starts with that nice gentle movement that I had right there at the beginning with some of that burnt sienna and stuff. Some of that that feeling of that movement here. But you could you could thin this out and like I've showed you how to do cloud dust fog kind of stuff and you could put you know some of that dust and stuff up and around there. That would be good. But a few just marks like this, this kind of makes a rougher looking uh, ride in the arena here. Boom, just like that. There, let's um, restate some of that. Burnt sienna, burnt sienna, a little green, a little bit of blue here. And uh, just so work back and forth. See, this just gives you, it's good interest, good contrast here. I'm just gonna do it a, a bit right in there to work it out. You could, you know, we could even get that nice, we should actually, and I think I will, we'll get a, just a bit darker blue burnt sienna here and work this out like this because there's the shadow that's going to be from the horse and the light here. So it's going to be actually creating a shadow and that always looks good. You know, when you put these ground shadows in like this, these cast shadows, this is really does help your uh, your scene quite a bit. See, it just it lifts him up off the surface there. And uh, yeah, that's pretty good. Just like that, maybe a, a bit out here. There. That's pretty good. It helps you with that light direction too, even though this has a pretty powerful light direction. Let's put a few little lights right up here. He's kicking it up. Maybe a bit more beige here. Not quite that light. He's kicking it up. There we go. Soften that out. There. That looks pretty good. <laughs> pretty happy with that one. Yeah, and that might be a little bit too calm of a blue up there. I'll take a look at that. You know, you have to step back and look at it there. And you see in there, that horse really does advance quite nice. You know, you could go in there and you can work a little bit more on that pike rail fence, put highlights in, do all that kind of stuff. But, uh, you know, that'll start to take away uh, from the uh, horse and stuff here. This is the story. This is the ride here that he's doing. And um, yeah, I'm I'm going to I'm going to keep that. Now, in some of my references and stuff that I see that I have out and around, you know, I see other little straps and stuff going on falling off and then around the horses and stuff, but I think I'm just going to keep it kind of simplistic like this. It's more about that horse and that rider, and I like that. I might, um, I might, as I look at it, you know, this is where I'll put it down for the day, and, and um, I might uh, work on that, um, you know, the uh, adding some of that stuff, you know, after I look at it for a little bit, but I might bring back up this shoulder here just a touch more, hit those grays first, and uh, then into the medium whites and whites, and then finally into the whites if you need. Here, just 
put some of that, see that heavy color and contrast, just gives beautiful, and this is what really makes it, guys, is you, you know, we'll push that heavy textured white, sliding that right in there like that. That's what really makes the, the painting and getting those textures on there. And it's something that I want to, as an artist, concentrate more on this year is getting some of those textures and stuff in there because you can see it adds quite a bit. Let's get some down here by his eye because that'll really give him a nice get off my back look here. There, like that. Powerful. Okay, hope you enjoyed it. He's a lot of fun. And you know, you can do all different kinds of things, you know. You can use these types of texturing techniques and painting techniques for these for any of your kinds of westerns, okay? So I have some other westerns that I'm gonna be showing you where we're gonna be doing some more of those misting techniques and some real depth. How do you paint a lot of depth within the western? <clears throat> and I have that coming. Also, for those of you that like the landscapes, I have a beautiful um, one that I made up of a ranch out in Yellowstone. And so we're going to paint that some of the Yellowstone landscape with, uh, with a ranch house in it. And we might put in some cows or, or horses or something like that in the distance, have a little lake in the distance. That's going to be uh, a heck of a lot of fun. We'll do that one. And um, yeah, so... A lot of stuff coming, okay? And we have that couchois floral that we're going to do. So I hope you enjoyed it. I had a lot of fun. And uh, for those of you that are in the memberships, thanks so much for supporting our channel. We really appreciate all of our members. I'll put final photos of this. I'll put my uh, original sketch in so that you have that. So if you want to paint this, um, I'll put all of those over on the community page for the membership. I'll have that up here shortly <laughs> and uh, you know if you have any of these members if you have any kinds of questions or anything like that just uh, you know post one of those questions you can post it up there on the community page and stuff and I'll be happy to help you out okay thanks so much and I'll see you guys on the next one I was going to come out in two days we'll have another one okay all right I'll see you then